All right, I'm back. What's good, everybody? It's your boy Rico of Street Scores bringing y'all a Sean Dion Hamilton film session edition of Street Scores. Here's your high school valedictorian general of Alabama's defense, the on-field coach, inside linebacker. I apologize for being gone so long. I've been very busy. Still am, but I had to make sure I got y'all this Sean Dion Hamilton video. I had to. His film was so fun to watch. I don't know if it's because I like linebackers more than I like corners and wide receivers, but his film by far was the most fun for me to analyze since I've been breaking down films. So let's get into it. Let's get. All right, now, with all the film I watched, I have several examples of every point that I'm making. I mean, almost infinite, but I want to only use two to four examples for each point I'm trying to prove so that I don't come off as redundant. Let's get into it. My first major point is how high his IQ and discipline is. His IQ is off the charts. One of the smartest linebackers as a prospect I've seen in years. I mean, just the fact that he was the quarterback of the defense for the greatest team in college football while he was on the field alongside Reuben Foster alongside Rashawn Evans he was the quarterback he was the one Nick Saban trusted to get the defense in place pre-snap he was the on-field coach and this play here is a great example of him being the brains of the operation watch how the DB right here number 15 comes up and asks Sean Deion Hamilton the question with very little hesitation Sean is able to tell him exactly where the DB is supposed to go points him in a direction the DB goes there and at the same time, Sean Dion Hamilton is able to be where he's supposed to be. Just a little example of how he's the on-field coach and how he was able to direct players into being where they were supposed to be. What also comes with high IQ is the ability to sniff out a play and to be able to quickly make decisions on defense, which is key to a linebacker's success, especially in the NFL. Watch his good play recognition, see where the ball is going, shoot up the gap, and make the play. Now, the tackle was made easy by the runner slipping but see how he quickly analyzes where the ball is going where the offense is trying to open up a gap for the running back to run through Sean Deion Hamilton is able to get there quickly and fill up the hole once again here is a prime example of Sean Deion Hamilton's IQ and his ability to sniff out a running play he is located right here watch as he sees the play saw the opening and held them until the cavalry arrived and that play was very important because it's third and goal they're up by a lot, but still, that's very clutch of him at third and goal to step up and make that play. If he didn't, the running back more than likely has an easy touchdown. But look, as, as soon as the ball is hiked, it's as if he already knows where the running back is going. He is slowly making his way. He's mirroring the running back's movements. He's with him step for step, laterally. And as soon as the running back makes the decision, Sean is there to make the grab. He doesn't exactly make the tackle by himself, a little bit of an ugly tackle, diving at the legs, but he held him until the cavalry arrived and that's all that really matters. Strong example of IQ. This is another great example of Sean Deion Hamilton's high IQ. This will be the last example because there's so many examples of this, so many plays where he does this, but I had to give y'all the max examples of four because it's just so amazing how he's able to do this and make it look easy. He looks like he knows the plays happening before it happens. He's located right here inside linebacker spot and he is following the running back sniffs out the play and makes the tackle. He's fighting through all of the rubble. Alabama players, Colorado State players all in his way and yet he is able to still see the running back way in the back of the play. He sees the small hole starting to open. This lineman attempts to block him. He fights right through it and makes a great textbook tackle to make the running back fall backwards. Didn't allow him to get any extra on the running play. No game. But again, with him right here and all of these people in the way, it is amazing to me that he is able to have the vision to see through all of this rubble. Be patient. Don't just shoot up now and just end up being another blocked Alabama player. Let the play work out. Be patient, stay disciplined in your gap, find the hole, and make the tackle. He makes it look so easy. Another special trait Sean has in his arsenal is that he's relentless. He does not give up on the play until the whistle is blown. High motor, keeps fighting until the play is dead. I love his effort and energy. He's located right here, as draft breakdown provided to us. And I love his energy. 
He doesn't have to be a part of this play. The play is pretty much dead, but he jumps in and secures the tackle. Make sure the running back is down. He doesn't have to be a part of this, but he relentlessly goes and attacks the running back to make sure the gain is as minimal as possible. Love that. Some people might just stay back and just watch to avoid getting hurt. But my boy Sean gets in and makes sure the play is made, even when he doesn't have to be involved. This here is another prime example of how Sean gets into trouble that he doesn't need to be in. And I love it out of a linebacker. As of now, he is outside the screen. But as the quarterback is scrambling, Sean Deion Hamilton enters the screen right here. He was originally being blocked by somebody and he was clogged up as Alabama was pressuring the quarterback. Quarterback made a miraculous escape. But watch Sean Deion Hamilton hawk this ball down from behind and force the fumble. Without Sean Deion Hamilton, this tackle would have been made by somebody on the Alabama defense. But him being so relentless, he came from behind added an extra hit, and it also forced a fumble. He is nowhere near the play at first. He keeps hustling and hustling, makes the play. Love that. Relentless high motor, always playing until the whistle is blown. And here's my last example of relentlessness and motor. He is located right here, penetrating and taking on the running back's block, which I like being disruptive. And number 25 is here to make the tackle. But what I like about Sean is that he believes his teammates should make the play, but he doesn't depend on them to make the play. He comes and joins in on the tackle to make sure the ball carrier is down. He said, give me my 0.5 tackle. Y'all gonna give me my stat. From where he was, he saw number 25 was in perfect position to make this play. But he was not having that. He was not going to rest until that ball carrier was on the ground. Now I want to show y'all some examples of how good his coverage skills can be. He may not be Roquan Smith speed, but he gets the job done. This video is two birds with one stone because it also shows his high IQ. He knows he's responsible for number 21. Even with all of the trickery going on, he immediately finds his responsibility. He is not as close to them as you would hope a defender would be pre-snap, but he is able to recover. And also go up and make the play. Got his head turned around, which is very key in defending receivers and making a play. But the primary thing I want to point out is his recovery speed. Sean is right here. The man he is covering is over here. This man has all of this space to lose Sean, especially with the crowd that's in between them. Sean D. Hamilton catches up to the receiver or running back, whoever that is. On him like glue. And goes up and gets a hand on the ball to make sure it's not completed but he also makes the interception crazy playmaking ability coverage skills and here's my last example of sean's good coverage skills abilities he's not perfect sometimes he doesn't get his head turned around to make a good play on the ball but one thing he does have is good makeup speed sean is located right here covering the slot receiver as the receiver makes a break and starts to gain distance on him sean kicks it into another gear Shows some of that makeup speed, gets his right hand in, breaks up the pass. Receiver makes a break to the outside, and on a lot of linebackers, this should be enough space by the time the quarterback throws the ball for it to be an easy completion. But Sean has good makeup speed, great timing with getting his hand in there, not too early to cause a pass interference, but soon enough to actually be able to make a play on the ball and not just simply tackle the receiver. Incomplete pass. Textbook linebacker right there. Good coverage skills. Again, not Roquan Smith speed, but enough to get the job done. Sean, who's located right here, now shows that he has some blitz potential to him. Showing a little bit of Zach Brown in him. He can be deadly as a blitzer in the NFL. Look at the speed that he has as he goes to pressure the quarterback. Ball is height. He slows it down. Sees which gap is the best to go through. Finds the gap, opening, and goes and gets a QB hit that might go down as a QB hit. Again, a good example of high IQ. He doesn't just run in there like a maniac. He analyzes the play, waits till everything settles up, waits till all the blockers are blocking somebody, goes up his gap, and makes the play. Because if he wasn't patient, he would have ran straight into the offensive lineman that was waiting to block him. But as the play developed, this defender took on that block, 
this offensive lineman was still continuing to block him, so he was getting double teamed, which allowed Sean to have a clean break to the quarterback and get a good hit on him. That quarterback won't forget that hit. That's where the patience and high IQ and discipline comes in at. I'm mainly showing y'all this for the Zach Brown speed, the little burst he has, and ability to blitz, but it's really the high IQ right here that many linebackers do not have to effectively blitz. It's one thing to have speed, it's another to know how to actually use it. Now there's a very strong possibility that Alabama drew it up for that defender to take on those two blocks and let Sean Dion go through free, but I'm still gonna give him credit for executing it perfectly. Now Sean isn't the most consistent or the best shed blocker, but there are times where he shows traits to where he can be an effective one, like this play. Sean is located right here. As the play starts, Sean being Sean with the high IQ, he doesn't just shoot up into the blocker. He attacks the blocker, makes sure he gets hands on him so he can remove him from being in his way whenever needed. Has his eyes to the backfield, locating the ball, sees the running back has it, and then makes a move to get away from the blocker, but the blocker holds him. Get your hands off my boy. Get your hands off my linebacker. He would have made a great tackle on this play if you weren't trying to cheat. But that's the block shedding potential you see in him. He combines IQ into everything he does. He's not just shedding the block just to shed it, because he could have gone either way, left or right, or he could have done it at a bad time. He's setting up the blocker, and as soon as the running back is ready to come near him, he at least attempts to shed the blocker, but the blocker is holding him. And the flag was called, so good job by the refs to see that. There's the flag right there. But yeah, even though he's not the most consistent block shedder, like his boy Rashawn Evans who just blows up plays like a maniac and just dominates whoever's in front of him, even if it is a big beefy offensive lineman. But Sean does combine some IQ with his block shedding and make sure his block shedding has a purpose and he's in the right location to make a play. Too bad buddy right here had to hold on my boy. Now this would not be a real film session breakdown if I only showed the good. I gotta show y'all the negatives too. Injuries aside, Sean Deion Hamilton definitely has some problems. Other than injuries, he also has a slight lack of athleticism and he has some pretty bad tackle habits. There's plenty of examples of him making bad tackles or completely missing tackles, taking bad angles on tackles on pursuits that I can show y'all, but I'm just gonna show y'all a few clips to get the point across. Sean tends to be a leg tackler at times. Here he is located right here. The majority of this play doesn't really matter. But here he is in pursuit. Leg tackle for no reason. He had a really good chance of making a play on this. He's right here. The ball carry is right here. That's plenty enough time and space to make a play. But again, a leg tackle. It was a mix of a bad angle and bad tackle habits. This has to be improved in the NFL if he plans to get any real playing time. Otherwise, coaches will game plan for this. But this is also a combination of his lack of athleticism, not just technicality. Because at this point, Rashawn Evans would have made the tackle because he is athletic enough. Sean Deion Hamilton is not athletic enough. He gets sort of blown by, is forced to make a leg tackle, and is not able to wrap up all the way. And this is a pretty consistent problem for him. And what's really crazy about this play is that it almost encompasses everything about Sean Deion Hamilton because his high IQ is fully on display on this play. As the offense runs their reverse, Sean Deion Hamilton's high IQ is fully on display. He is the first person to recognize that this is a reverse and that he needs to start running to the right side of the field. As you can see, he is the first one turning around. Even Minka Fitzpatrick, who people consider to have one of the highest IQs as a prospect in years, Sean Deion Hamilton is the first person to actually make a break, to actually turn around and start going to where the ball is actually going. He has a clear advantage on everybody else. But as I pointed out earlier, lack of athleticism and bad tackling habits, results in him not making the play at all. He tripped the receiver, so it kind of counts as a tackle, but this can be very unhealthy in the NFL. This will be abused. Here is clear evidence of his limited tackling range. He is pretty much in trouble if he is not directly in front of the ball carrier when he's going to make a tackle. If he's off by any angle, it is a leg tackle, it is a reach, and it is a hope and usually it is a failure. Again, this play shows all of Sean Deion Hamilton, high IQ, 
great ability to filter through all the traffic to find the ball carrier one of the first to actually break towards where the ball carrier is running finds the hole but lack of athleticism starts to show and he is not able to get to the hole even though he knows where the hole is about to be he is not athletic enough to get there to plug it up before the running back gets there and he is forced to make this diving tackle which resulted in a big game for USC. And again, I don't want to completely discredit him because this isn't even his responsibility. This is this linebacker's responsibility to be in this hole. He allowed himself to get blocked. Sean Deion Hamilton comes over to help, even though it's not in his direct responsibility. So this is a great recognition and a great attempt to make a play, but the lack of athleticism and bad tackling habits results in this. Him watching as the play is going on past him. Now, I know Sean is not the most consistent tackler. He doesn't have the best tackle techniques. And he's not the most athletic. But I don't want to make it look like he just misses every tackle in the world. There's still times where he does make the play. Even on angle tackles where the ball carrier isn't set up directly in front of him. As you can see by indicator, he's set up right here inside linebacker spot. He does a good job of recognizing where the play is going early. He allows himself to get blocked by the offensive lineman, but this is the offensive lineman's job. He's supposed to win against linebackers. But he does do a good job of keeping his right arm extended to where that the blocker can't fully get a good grab on him. So he's able to slightly control the blocker in a way, at least to the left side of the field. And he is in good position to make a play. He has a decent angle, but unlike the plays I showed before you, he actually had a good wrap up this time. I prefer for him to wrap up the running back a little bit higher around the waist to make it harder to escape the tackle. But at least he gets the ankles and he does not let go. He holds on for dear life until the running back is down. So his tackling isn't completely hopeless. He does have some plays where he gets the job done. It's not the prettiest. It's not the most technically sound. It's not the most athletic. But sometimes it's good enough just to get the job done. Before I go, I wanted to show y'all two last plays that I really feel like y'all should see. This first one, I categorize as greatness. It's a mix of high IQ and coverage skills. It just shows how special Sean Deion Hamilton is as a linebacker. He is located right here as the indicator shows. And watch how he watches Sam Donald's eyes the whole play. And then is quick enough to make a play on the ball right here just in case if Sam Donald dared to dump it off to this running back. It would have been a pass breakup or even possibly an interception, possibly return for a touchdown. Because this is a premium. Not a lot of linebackers or even cornerbacks can read a quarterback's eyes as well and mirror his movements to where he can disrupt the play no matter which direction the quarterback is looking. And he took away his dependable dump off option, which is something quarterbacks love to have. And I like the fact that Sean Deion Hamilton had high enough IQ to take away this safety blanket. This is not the type of play that will show up on a highlight tape. This is not the type of play to show up on a highlight tape at all, but I definitely wanted y'all to see this because this is very important and this is very useful at the NFL level. And before I go, I have to show y'all this funny play I found in the Sean Deion Hamilton archives. I'm not sure if many people noticed this, even after they've watched this Florida State versus Alabama film from 2017. But I really felt like y'all needed to see this funny play. I'm just gonna let it play. Y'all, I'll, I'll break it down after y'all watch it. He's located right here. Who, but somebody help that man? <laughs> I had to include this in the film session, man. This is too funny to me. He was already embraced to take on the right guard number 70, <laughs> and then number 70 turned around and was like. I ain't got time for you. You too little, man. We ain't... Look at look at Sean Deion Hamilton ready to face his bully. I got it. You not taking my lunch money today? Oh, oh. That man, Sean, fell down like, wait, wait, I'm not done. Man, one last time in slow motion, man. This man was ready, boy. He had his knees bent, arms extended. I'm going to take this block and make me a play. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ooh, that's how sad, boy. I'm sorry I had to do it to you, Sean, but I think folks had to see this, man. All right, now let me get into the positives and negatives. Positives. Off the charts football IQ and instincts. Great eyes to hawk ball through crowds of bodies and chaos. Great discipline. Can be a decent tackler at times when he's squared off from the ball carrier. 
He's very effective at run stopping, man and zone coverages and blitzing. Very disciplined in run support. Smooth hips and footwork that allow him to cover well. And even when he is not able to break up the pass, he does a good job of limiting any possible yards after catch. Knack for finding the best hole to penetrate through to get in the backfield, which helps his blitzing and run stopping. And he also has shown some potential for being a good block shedder when asked to do so. Now the negatives. Injuries, injuries, injuries. Injury prone, and he also does not look like his 2016 self because of wear and tear from his past injuries. So you have to worry about his future injuries and his past injuries. And he is also a little small for Mike Linebacker. And he's also not very athletic. And he's not a great block shedder. He can be good at times, but he's not consistent with it. He doesn't throw people off of him like a Tremaine Edmonds does. And he doesn't just straight up go blow up a blocker maniac style like his teammate Rashawn Evans does. But Rashawn Evans block shedding was some of the best I've seen from a linebacker in a while. So that's hard to compare. And also, Sean's tackling was not consistent at all. If he is not square in front of the ball carrier, he struggles with the tackle. He takes bad angles. He arm tackles from time to time. He puts his head down while tackling sometimes. These are all things I've seen from him on the field. But these can definitely be fixed and improved. And now for my projection. He's a slightly more athletic, smarter version of Will Compton. Without injury concerns, he could grow into being the captain of our defense with his high IQ and discipline. But not only is there a chance that he can get hurt again, but his past injuries have limited his present athleticism and effectiveness at playing linebacker. So I project him to make the roster as a great depth player that we can nurture into becoming a great starter if he can stay healthy. He's competing against Josh Harvey Clemens, Martrell Spate, and Zach Vigil for that third inside linebacker spot on the depth chart. And with his superior IQ and instincts, I believe that he has a great chance to take the spot. Josh Harvey Clemens, who's been getting first team reps so far in the offseason, is far more athletic than probably any linebacker on our roster. But he has work to do at becoming good at football in a linebacker position. He's mostly just athletic. Sean Deion Hamilton just has to stay healthy. Sean Deion Hamilton has all of the intangibles, but he just needs to improve on a few things such as tackling and block shedding. He brings something to our team that no linebacker has since London Fletcher, which is high IQ, discipline, instincts, all of that. And I hope he can stay healthy long enough to show everybody what I'm talking about. But all in all, I expect him to make the 53-man roster and eventually become an impact player for our team in the future. Maybe not this year, but in a few years to come. And that's it for this Sean Deion Hamilton edition of Film Session. I apologize for the wide gap between videos, but I've been very busy lately. And I'm trying to get these out to y'all as fast as I can. Next up is Tim Settle, which I'm excited about. I'm going to get that to y'all as soon as I can. And again, thanks for watching. Make sure y'all don't Mike fake punch that like button. Favorite subscribe, I'll subscribe back. I'll catch y'all later. I'm out.